Hello and welcome to our Connect lesson here at Pilgrim for the week of October 11th. If you haven't joined us before, welcome and we're so glad that you decided to join us. Our theme for this week is focusing on the good. The human brain is so amazing, isn't it? I've put together just a few facts for us to take a look at this morning. Take a look. The human brain weighs about three pounds. Number two, the 60% of our human brain is made up of fat. Ugh. Your brain isn't fully developed until you're about 25. That might explain why we decide to do some silly things that we do, huh? Your brain storage capacity is considered virtually unlimited. That means we can store as much as we want in this brain. And the last fun fact is brain information travels at an impressive 268 miles per hour. Shoo, that's some fast thinking. Those were some amazing facts, weren't they? I bet there's some that you have at home there that I didn't have on my list that you know about the amazing brain. Now I want you to remember that as we go along when we talk about focusing on the good and what we keep inside of our brain. Okay, I need everybody at home to close your eyes now. Close them, close them tight. Now when I clap my hands, I want you to yell out the one thing that was on your mind right at that second. Eyes closed, ready, set, yell it out. What were some of the things that you were thinking about? Was it that you were bored? That you wished you were outside? That you're hungry or you're feeling sad or kind of tired? There's all sorts of things that our brain could be thinking at one time. Is there ever a time when we're not thinking anything? I don't think so. Our brain is always, always working. And how about the thoughts that we have in our heads? Are they all good thoughts? Or is there sometimes some scary and bad thoughts in our head? There's both, isn't there? Our scripture today comes from Philippians 4, verse 8. And again, it's Paul writing to us like it was last week. Well, is there always something to be happy and rejoice about? Well, Paul says yes in the scripture, which is ironic because Paul is writing from prison and he's still finding things to praise God for and to be thankful for. He was put there, can you imagine, for doing just what God wanted him to do, for following and caring for others. But still, he found things to be joyful about and to rejoice about there in jail. So let's take a look at our scripture for today. Philippians 4, verse 8. Brothers and sisters, continue to think about what is good and worthy of praise. Think about what is true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. So what do we want to highlight? What do we want to focus on the good from that scripture from Paul? We want to be good and worthy, true, honest. Those are the things that Paul's telling us to thank God for, those things that are in our lives. Now, how do we focus on the good? And what do we mean by focus? Well, let me give you a little example here of what focusing is. You know, when you take a picture, you either with a camera or with your phone, you have to make sure that you have what you want to take right inside there and that the picture is good. I'll give you an example. It's kind of like this. If I wanted to take a picture of these flowers, but I was in a hurry and I didn't study the camera, I would get a picture that was kind of all blurry and out of focus like this. Or if I wanted to take a picture of the flowers and I switched it around so it was really focusing on me and not on the flowers, that's not focusing on what I'm supposed to. So do you get what I was doing there with the camera? If I was in a hurry and wasn't focusing on the flowers, things were a little blurry and I didn't get out of it what I wanted. 
or the same as if I turned the camera to look at me and wasn't focusing on the flowers, I wasn't getting the picture that I wanted. And God calls us to focus on the good, the things that we can rejoice in and that God has given us, not to always focus on the sad or the things that aren't going right in our lives. Now today, our story is a very familiar one. It's the story of Mary and Martha. And Martha doesn't seem to want to focus on the same thing that Mary does. Let's hear the story. One day, Jesus went to visit in the home of two sisters named Mary and Martha. The sisters welcomed Jesus into their home and Martha immediately began to work very hard to get dinner ready for Jesus. While Martha worked to prepare the meal, Mary just sat at the feet of Jesus and listened to his teaching. Martha was upset that her sister was not helping her, so she went to Jesus and complained, Can't you see that my sister is not helping me? Don't you even care? Tell her to help me. Jesus answered, Martha, you are worried and troubled about too many things. Only a few things are important, perhaps just one. Mary has chosen that one thing, and I will not take it away from her. Martha made the mistake of focusing on herself rather than on Jesus. Mary, on the other hand, was totally focused upon Jesus and what he was teaching. Jesus said that she had chosen the right thing. As we live our daily lives, are we worried and troubled about many things that are not really important? Or are we focused on Jesus, the one thing that is really important? So in our scripture today, Martha was mad, wasn't she? She, although, was focusing on herself instead of the message that Jesus was there to give. Mary, on the other hand, got what was more important and was focusing on the stories that Jesus had for them about God's love. Now in our everyday life, it's kind of hard because we have days that we're mad and angry and sad, all sorts of emotions that keep us from focusing on God. Have any of you ever seen the movie Inside Out? I attached a little clip of it to the email I sent you so you can watch that, either stop and watch it now or watch it afterwards. But in the story, it's about a little girl named Riley who her whole family has to move to San Francisco, a whole new city. And at first she was a very fun-loving, hockey-loving girl, but once she gets there, everything just goes wrong. And she lets the sadness and the fear and the anger take over. And she doesn't see the good things that she still has there. And she even makes some bad decisions but you'll see that in the movie. So what do we do about those things taking over in our head? How can we keep those bad emotions and those bad feelings from taking over? Well, we focus on the good. We take a moment, we take a breath, we talk to God in prayer, and we think about the things that God has given us that are good even on those days where everything is going bad, which made me think of one of my favorite books that I used to read to the kids all the time called Alexander's Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Have you ever read that? If not, it's a good one. Take it out. And everything possible goes wrong for Alexander. And we all have days like that where things go wrong, but we take a deep breath we refocus and we remember the gifts that God has given to us. So we're going to end today with a little demonstration of how God works in our life. I want you to imagine that this water here is all the things that you are worried about and scared about and all those bad feelings of being angry at somebody. It's filled all the way up to the top. Now I have here some rocks and this stands for God is my rock. And as we make sure that we have God in our life, it starts to push out some of that fear, doesn't it? And some of that sadness and some of that worry 
as we concentrate and focus on God. And as we're focusing on God, we think about the good things that we have in our lives, like our family, a place to live, food to eat, maybe that new bike that you were hoping for. All of those things are good things that can take over. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you'll join us again next week as we continue our Connect lessons. Let us pray. O oh God of greatness and power, we acknowledge that you are the Lord of the universe. You created us and you are in control of everything. Thank you for chasing our fears and our sadness away when we praise you and trust in you. Amen.